How's it going, everybody? And um, let me check about my microphone real quick. See one more time if I'm able to adjust it. Oh, it was here. And I slid it all the way up to here. And I accessed it through my Zoom. And it seems to be working. Now, I'm going to hit the, this microphone to make sure I'm picking up the microphone that I have this little tripod on. So let me thump it. So when I thumped my tripod, it did not pop. So... Let me see. Uh, you know what I need to do? What if it actually got disconnected and I've been using all this time the microphone for the from the computer? No? It's plugged in. So yep. Should be working. That should be it. Microphone is not working properly. Check my microphone. Okay, I'm checking it. Why did he give me that? Hmm. Because I clicked it to check it. Test mic. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Sounds like it's working, people. And I have it up very high now. It was like here. So I hope this is better. Yay, per y'all's request. All right, we're going to get into Hebrews and um, Daniel. We're going to continue on an inch closer to the mark of the beast. We do not quite get to it tonight. Continuing on in Hebrews. Sorry, I took a little break, but yeah, we were working on the microphone, weren't we? Okay, I hope y'all can hear me better. I will play this back and hopefully hear the sound increase. But this is a new covenant that I will make with, oh, that's right. We're continuing on. But this will be a new covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. It's no longer Israel and Judah in the old covenant as they were split. See yesterday's study. How come I'm not logged in? I'm always logged in. Okay. Buster Brown, let me log the other ones in. Gotta be logged in, man, in case we highlight stuff. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their mind. It says in their mind and write it on their hearts. In the um, Old Testament, I will put my law in their inward parts, which is their mind, and write it on their hearts. Y'all, you don't have free will. <laughs> what in the world I had to go make a Facebook post on that sorry so I mean he's doing the work he's telling you I, 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 I put my law in their mind and write and write them in their hearts. God does it. I do it. I. So let's put, I will. And let's highlight, I will. I will be to them a God and they shall be my people. Who? The sheep. Not the whole world. John 3.16. For God so loved Cosmos in the Greek, which is his orderly arrangement. We just did an apple of an eye video on that. I had it pinned. I just unpinned it. But it's on my Facebook. Excuse me. Or this channel. Click playlist or scroll down and find it. It's not but a week old. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. 
it's a people group. It's his sheep. Remember, cosmos, part of the definition or usage was uh, kingdom. Or what was it? Harmonious arrangement, order, constitution, government. That's what it was. And the government you can translate over to kingdom. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord. Yeah, man doesn't teach man. Nothing worse when you hear somebody go, well, I brought somebody to Jesus. No, if you're in truth and through your words, somebody else came to the truth, that was the Holy Spirit moving you, moving them. That's spirit to spirit or the Holy Spirit just free, free flowing from one person to another. Man doesn't do anything without the spirit world moving it so. That's why Jesus looked at him and said, you're of your father, the devil. That's pretty cut and dried, isn't it? The spirit world that's got a hold to you is Satan's world, is what he's telling them. Anyway, they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall already know me from the least of the greatest of them, saith the Lord. All sheep will come to know the Lord. For whom he did foreknow, before the, before the, whoops, hang on just a quick second there. Bop, 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 bop. All right. And they shall all know. Well, Jesus said only came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What did I do? For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. For he hath chosen us in him from before the foundation of the world. Predestinated. So it's Ephesians 1, 4, and 5, with Romans 8, 29, and 30. Back over to grace. Uh, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10. They never give you verse 10 in the false pulpits. It's the key verse that lines back up with Ephesians 1, 4, and 5, previous chapter, and Romans 8, 29, and 30. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. In that he saith a new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and worldly sanctuary. For there was a, let's go back over here now. And when God speaks of a new covenant, it means he has made the first one obsolete. It is now out of date and will soon disappear. Of course, Jesus fulfilled the law and it's now the law of Christ. Which is basically Jesus coming into you and turning you from those damnable sins. Listen in Galatians 9, 19, 19 through 21. Adultery, fornication, wrath, drunkenness, strife, lavaciousness, idolatry, witchcraft, variance. Uh, a lot of it has to do with arguing and bickering, which fuses in with the murder slash hatred, which moves into God saying, if you have hatred in your heart, then it's basically murder. So, repenting is key, but you don't do it on your own. The Lord beats the world out of you. That's Hebrews 12, 6 through 8. He locks you down and he beats the world out of you. Which is what Mystery Babylon did as a ritual in 2020. For their world of Mother Earth, the Mother Goddess, uh, the Tree Goddess, Grove worship. Um, 
That's Mystery Babylon. It's Isis. It's Venus. It's Lucifer. It's the shape-shifting version of the male fallen angel into the goddess. And she is everywhere. That first covenant between God and Israel had regulations for worship and a place of worship here on earth. There are two rooms in that tabernacle. The first room what were a lampstand and a table and the sacred loaves of the bread on the table. The room was called the holy place. Then there was a curtain. Behind the curtain was a second room called the most holy place. And that room was the gold incense altar with a wooden chest called the Ark of the Covenant, which was covered with gold on all sides. Inside the Ark were a gold jar containing manna, Aaron's staff, that sprouted leaves, and the stone tablets of the covenant. We were to slide over. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had a golden censer in the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with a gold wherein was the gold, golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded and the tables of the covenant. Sometimes it's just fun to read it in the old King James for poetry's sake. All right, we're going to continue on in Daniel where we tomorrow would get into the Mark of the Beast, wouldn't we? Let's look at tomorrow real quick. Tomorrow we will be in column three. Yep. And tomorrow we cover the Mark of the Beast in the book of Daniel, which is fascinating. Can't wait. All right. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me by any wisdom. Again, man's free will. No, it's moved by the spirit world, wasn't it, Daniel? Tell him, Daniel. For any wisdom that I have, more than any living person, no, all humans in the flesh are equal. It's the spirit that changes. That's what all the parables, I mean, all the all the miracles were that Jesus performed. They were parallels of what he does then in his sheep. He cast out the devils. Back when we were doing those sins in Galatians 5, 19 through 21, before he called us, before he locked us down, before he started beating the world out of us, Saul, who later became Paul and wrote, uh, many epistles in the New Testament was killing sheep before Jesus literally called him. That's why Paul refers to himself as an apostle because he communed with Jesus one-on-one. -on -one. Now, we just do it spiritually, but it's the same. It's a calling. Saul, who later became Paul, got called on the road to Damascus. Without the calling, Saul would have stayed Saul and would have kept killing sheep. We don't have any free will to properly come out of the world, come out of sin. Do we ever stop completely sinning? No. But it's not the damnable sins that are listed. I think it's Romans 2 and Galatians 5, 19 through 21 and a few other places. The one in Romans, when we just went over it, it stated, just like Galatians, those which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom. You don't stay in damnable sins. But you never get rid of the sin nature, which is what? Sense of pride, sense of ego. Looking at yourself in the mirror. Sometimes you lose your temper your thoughts. It's not always purity. It's not angelic Jesus while you're in that flesh, but you're not going to be running around committing adultery. You're not going to take adultery to the grave. Or pagan Christmas to the grave. There's no way. 
There's no way. All right. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living, but for their sakes, that shall make known the interpretation to the king, that thou mightest know the thoughts of thy heart. Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, a great image. Y'all want to bring it up? I think I've got it saved. Well, unfortunately, they're both very tiny. When you do a Google search, and um, that's what most architectural or art rendition <laughs> renditionings are. Okay, so a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee. And the form thereof was terrible. And why is it terrible? Because it's the evil kingdoms that run the earth, but especially because it culminates with the mark of the beast. And so that's why in his heart, it's just terrible. I don't know any other way to explain it. The mark of the beast is nothing more than human body possession. All goats are going to believe that the Antichrist rose from the deadly wound to his right eye. Coming to a theater near you. And when it happens, this earth is going to change. Pardon the pun, in a New York minute. Gotham. So... The image's head was a fine gold... His breast and arms of silver. So the gold is Babylon. The silver is the Medes and the Persians. The belly and his, belly and his thighs of brass, uh, which is Greek. The legs of iron, which is Rome, if I'm not mistaken. And his feet part iron and part clay, which is the continuation of the Roman Empire that basically melds into the AI, which is nothing more than the fallen angels or the demonic entities are no longer in crystal balls or Ouija boards. They're in your technology. They reside in the technology. Per the album by the police in 1981 titled Ghost in the Machine. And at my old Bible study channel, we do show the playlist. Click playlist, not videos. Go down and click AI is the ghost in the machine mark of the beast. I feel like I just did one on my Bible study channel. Also, did I? The playlist, no free will, John 3.16, the word of God is but three things. Uh, God the actor and God the creator. Okay. <laughs> so I haven't. And uh, when we get into tomorrow's study, when we, when we cover this mark of the beast uh, in the book of Daniel, specific to verses 20, excuse me, 41 through 43 we will then i'll give y'all more detail and so forth so and if we look at the pictures doesn't it tell us uh, bronze but yeah i can't see it but i'm pretty sure the iron is the roman empire The head of gold was Babylon. The silver was the Medes and the Persians. The brass was the Greek. It was the Grecian Empire. What did the gold symbolize in the book of Daniel? Daniel 2.34 by Bible verse. Um, 
Nebuchadnezzar's dream, iron was the Holy Roman Empire. Or the Roman Empire, I should say. Yeah, so generally, biblically, commenters agree that the legs, feet, and toes represent the Roman Empire, which is what we're in today. You got the Roman goddess on top of the capital. We're connected to, you know, you got the three city states. One is money, which is the city of London that sits inside of London, England. That's your trilateral commission. You've got the uh, the VAT over there in, in the middle of Rome. That's a city state where the obelisk faces the dome. The obelisk came directly from Egypt. Uh, the dome is St. Peter's Basil Basilica. The obelisk faces the dome in this city state, Washington, D.C., which sits inside of Virgin Mary Lamb, Virginia, Maryland, Virgin Mary Lamb, Virginia, Maryland. So we are the, the Roman Empire today. But the feet and the toes getting into the iron and the clay, the clay are the humans, and the iron is the technology. So looks like I've already gotten into tomorrow's verses, but we will get more specific tomorrow. His legs of iron and his feet part of iron. So it's a continuation of the Roman Empire, but now it's morphing into the technology age versus just what the Roman Empire brought us, and part of clay, which is man. Thou sawest till that stone was cut out without hands. And this is God destroying it, of course, during his wrath, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them into pieces. Again, I go back and forth and do Daniel and Revelation. They are on my playlist, the Revelation 11th study or 12th study. I can't remember. Daniel's always ahead of Revelation. This is like my 12th study of Daniel, if I'm not mistaken, or 13th. I can't remember. Well, I guess if you just click the, the Bible study channel, you will see it. This is Daniel 12th study. We just did Revelation 11th study. So click on the Revelation study and click on the Daniel study. Go through both right now. <laughs> why not we're right on the prep precipice of it all thou sawest till the stone was cut out without hands which smote the image upon the feet which were the iron and the clay and break them into pieces so God of course of course destroys the system but this is the dream okay so this is what it looked like in the dreams of Nebuchadnezzar then the iron the clay the brass the silver the gold broken two pieces together this is all in Revelation when it talks about you know, Babylon, the great has fallen, is fallen, so on and so forth. When it's destroyed, it became like chaff on the summer threshing floors and the wind carried them away. That no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream. And we tell and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Now for the interpretation. Thou, O king, art a king. Of kings. For the God of heaven have given thee a kingdom. Oh, you mean he didn't earn it? Through his prideful free will. And of course, Nebuchadnezzar gets into that pride in Daniel 4, where Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, writes how God called him to salvation. Imagine that. That's why you get, there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and one is not yet, because that's the seven kings of all of mystery Babylon through the ages. But Nebuchadnezzar was not fallen. He was a sheep. And the first four chapters of Daniel are basically his story, along with Daniel's story. Thou, O king, art a king of kings, for the God of heaven have given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. I'm glad y'all are here. I love you very much. Ask questions anytime. That's what I'm here for.